Ahoy there, Captain Benzie here, coming at you with another video for Eve Echoes. And this video is going to be a little bit controversial. Some of you will like this, some of you will dislike this. It's a video that I've actually debated with myself whether or not I should put this out, or whether I should sort of let sleeping dogs lie, so to speak. Ultimately, I came to the decision that yes, this is something that is worth talking about for a couple of different reasons. One, I believe in supporting all the aspects of the game and its community, therefore I think if we can showcase how to do something that can be quite fun for the people doing it, then there's a certain benefit to that. And for those who aren't going to find this quite as fun because they're worried about getting caught by it, well, ultimately I think it's better that we make people aware of this. Ultimately, it's something that's happening whether or not I showcase it, I would rather get more people doing it and having fun, and make it something that other players are more aware of. That's my reasoning at least. In today's video then, we're going to be talking about how to camp a low sec gate or station using the concept of suicide ganking. Now this is a time honoured tradition in EVE Online, and the concept is fairly simple. Basically you accept that you are going to lose your ship, but you understand that the benefits of what you're doing are going to outweigh the costs of losing the ship, and that's basically it. So this means that you can actually sit there and perform a gate camp in low sec and take down some surprising targets at knowing that you're going to lose your ship in the process. You don't care that the gate guns are going to get you because whatever you're pulling down is going to be worth it in the end. And that's the concept. Now, I'm actually going to be showcasing this using the Corax Sniper, and there are a couple of reasons for this. If we jump into the fitting page here for the Corax Sniper and have a look at it, you'll see this is a pretty skeletal fit. Remember, things are all about keeping it cheap. Now, there are other ships that you can use for this as well, and that's something I will address later. Whilst we were doing this yesterday in Tama, I actually jumped onto main for PvP for once. Um, normally, I leave that to my silent main, the character that nobody knows exists. Um, but yesterday I actually jumped onto main in Tama and we did get some feedback and people saying, oh, you should do it this way, you should do it that way, and I'll address that in a moment. The reason that I think the Corax Sniper is the best at this is primarily due to the cost to alpha ratio. Basically, the concept of a suicide gank is simple. You need to do as much damage as you can before you are destroyed. Therefore, high alpha is more important than high DPS. For example, here, that 275.49 DPS looks terrible until you actually do the math on how much damage each of these missile launches is putting out in one strike, multiply that out by four, then add on all four of the ballistic control units that we have in the bottom here. Ultimately, that gives us an effective alpha strike of over 4,000 damage. That's also done, I should point out here, with a couple of Califaction Catalysts in the rig slots. This whole fit, by the way, costs less than 20 million isk, including the hull, including the rigs, including all of the modules. So if you can take out a target that is worth more than 20 million isk, well, you're in profit, aren't you? And that's the concept we're going for. So why the Corax Sniper? Well, if we have a look at its abilities here, in addition to its roll bonuses, we have a 7.5% increase to small missile and torpedo damage. That is a straight up 37.5% increase to the damage you've got straight away. Plus, then you have Sniper Mode, which increases all of your damage by a further 50%. Yes, it means you've got a longer time between shots, but we don't care because we're only getting one shot off anyway. You can't move, but again, we don't care because you're only getting one shot off. All this kind of thing. We don't care about any of the other abilities here on the Korak Sniper, but that 10% small missile torpedo explosion velocity does also mean that we make sure that against smaller, faster moving targets, that all of this damage is applied to the best of our ability. Now, obviously, the immediate thought is, okay, well, if the Korak Sniper can do it, what about the Talwar Sniper? Well, there are two problems with this. One, they do have that same small missile torpedo damage, but you'll notice the Talwar Sniper gets bonuses to things like Warp Drive Signature, Stasis Web of Fire, um, things that we don't really care about here. That 10% small missile torpedo explosion velocity on the Korax Sniper 
is actually worth something to us. It does mean that the missile damage that we're going to be putting out is capable of applying better to a target. The aim is that something lands on the gate, you lock it as it's landing, you launch, and it should therefore go down in one strike. This works against things like Condor 2 interceptors. In fact, any of the interceptors can go down in one alpha from this. If you have a couple of people sitting on the gate in this fit, then you can both launch at a target and you can take out faction frigates with this. We've actually taken out um, higher than that as well. There have been situations where you can take out a cruiser in one shot and you take out something, you know, like a decent enough fit stab a fleet issue, for example, with four Korak snipers and you're in big profit. Yeah, you lose the four Korak snipers, but it's worth it to get that stab a fleet issue kill, at least in my opinion. And that's the concept that we're going for here. So, between the Korak Sniper and the Talwar Sniper, the Korak Sniper comes ahead on the fact that it's got that 10% small missile torpedo explosion velocity, and also the fact that it's a lot cheaper on the market. People actually use the Talwar Sniper, the Korak Sniper not so much, which helps us to keep the cost down. Now, one of the other ones that was suggested to me whilst we were out there was to go into the Galente Federation and use the amazing Thorax prototype. Now, I want you to just have a look at this for a moment. We've got four high slots, and there is a bonus here, medium railgun operation bonus, 5% medium railgun damage, 25% additional railgun damage on top of four turrets. That's basically five turrets there. If we actually go up to something like the Thorax Trainer, you'll see that this doesn't have that same ability. It's still got the four slots, but it's only 2% per level for a total of 10% additional damage. Heck, even the base Thorax only gets that 5% railgun damage on four high slots. So for what we care about here, the Thorax prototype is the equal to the main thorax, but it's a tech level lower. It's a lot cheaper to build and to replace with insurance. So again, it would be an easier fit. Now, the guy who suggested this one to me actually pointed out that he would use it with snub-nosed railguns. Now, I tried this on Fulmination by attacking the gate guns directly, um, and I found that you don't even get the second shot off with the snub-nosed railguns before the gate guns or sentry guns will take you out. So, yes, whilst the snub-nosed railguns have a higher paper DPS, they don't get to apply that. They only get one shot before the, uh, before the gate guns take you out. Two, if you are incredibly lucky with server ticks, I managed to get that once two shots went off before I was blown up. Instead, then, you would swap to something like rifled railguns. They've got lower overall DPS, but they've got more uh, a higher damage per shot. That then means that you get a better alpha strike. The trouble was, when I put uh, four of the rifled railguns, and I used C-types for the demonstration on Fulmination, four C-type rifled railguns with four magnetic field stabilizers in the low slot um, only came to about 1,700 on alpha, which was not nearly as much as the Korak Sniper can put out. It's also a medium weapon, which means if the target is still slightly moving, there is the possibility of missing, a higher possibility of missing. And also the Thorax, uh, the Thorax prototype costs more than the entire fit of the Korax Sniper. So this is by far the best ship to do it with. And ultimately, as I said, just to go through that again, we've got two Warhead Califaction Catalysts here just to up that damage bonus. Don't worry about bay loading accelerators. You're not going to get a second shot off. You just want as much damage as you can for that one shot. We've got four here Gallows Small Missile Launchers. You can go higher if you're willing to spend a bit more. Um, I wouldn't really necessarily go for C-types. This is already doing 4,000 uh, strike damage there. And then the lows are all Republic Fleet Ballistic Control Systems. Basically, what you do is you fit your ship out with this, you find a station, a system with a station, you dock up at that station, and you drop off a load of spare missile launchers and spare ballistic control units. These are dirt cheap. Like, literally, these ballistic control units, when I was doing this yesterday, I think were costing, like, less than half a million isk each. Um, if you get those, you fill up a station with those. You then go out with you on your own or with your friends, and you just target anything that happens to come close enough. Depending on how many of you there are will depend on what kind of targets you can pull down. If there are, like, 12 of you able to lock on almost instantly and open fire, you can probably take out some big beefy targets. 12 Koraxes doing 4,000 damage each in a strike, well, you do the math on that. That's 48,000 damage. That's enough to take out most battle cruisers. Um, so you could pull down something like a Cinnable with that kind of firepower really, really easily. But even in a one-on-one, -on -one, you'll take out things like interceptors, no trouble at all. The difficulty is locking on fast enough and getting the shot off. So in the sort of 
the combat slots here, sorry, the engineering slots, you could go for some targeting system uh, sub-controllers to increase your scan resolution adjustment to lock on that little bit faster. That's the other advantage as well that something like the Corax has over the Thorax prototype, simply because it can lock on that little bit faster. Now, this is especially funny if you want to go on a little roam and find sort of a low sec area where people have just kind of, obviously they've taken refuge and decided they want to rest on the gate, safe in the knowledge that no one's going to be stupid enough to fire at them under gate guns, right? Well, yes and no. If I jump into the character stuff here, as I said, I only got one kill on Benzi directly yesterday, um, so shout out here to, um, she did message, Centauran um, here for being such a good sport on this one. It's not a particularly lucrative kill overly, you know, it's obviously it's a fairly low condor interceptor there that's probably being used for cargo running and it doesn't really have any cargo in its hold at this point in time, but it's still a 49 million isk kill that I took out with the Korak sniper there in one simple shot. Yeah, okay. I immediately lost my Korak sniper there. You can see the Kaldari Type A sentry gun took me out in one shot. You can see I dropped everything that I was carrying there, three of the missile launchers and two of the Republic Fleet Ballistic Controls. Um, I had a friend loot that for me and then con uh, contract it to me at the station. But again, if you've got spare missile launchers and ballistic control units at the station, you just kind of refit. And once your crime time is out, you go back and loot yourself if you're still there. Now, I've gone through Nullsec and, well, through Lowsec many times to find someone like a daredevil just sitting on the gate chilling there because, yeah, they think they're safe. Three of these rock up to that, lock on, open fire, yeah, you lose three Korak snipers, that's 60 million isk. How much is a fully fit daredevil worth? Look that up and tell me if you think that kind of kill might be worth it. Now, again, I ultimately say this because this can be quite interesting and enjoyable for a sort of group activity. It's not easy. Like, this is not an easy way to get kill marks. Ultimately, you've got to be able to lock on very quickly. You've got to be able to launch your missiles. And basically, you'll see that if I undock this, um, what you really need to do is make sure that absolutely everything is stacked up in sort of a quick succession. So you can just tap, 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 tap and everything launches in one go. Now, obviously here I haven't got this because I've not stacked it yet, but essentially you stack all of your missiles, you pop that to the side there, put this here, wherever you are, you're gonna park up into sniper mode. You're then going to tap all of these in order like that as you lock. You've got enough capacitor to do it. You see, obviously I didn't fire because I'm not locked onto anything, but if we were to open up and actually have a look at the stats here when the game lets me, there we are. It's 253 damage across the board there. So 250, 250, 250. That's over a thousand strike there. Over four gallows small missile launches. That's 4,000 damage coming in. Just over. It's about what? 4,012 um, plus 12, 4,048. Quick bit of maths there um, against the target. And because you've got that explosion velocity and explosion radius, um, courtesy of the Corax, you should actually be able to apply pretty much all of that to a target. They're never going to take the full 4,000, but it's enough to make a ship think twice, and it's usually enough to take out some of the smaller, faster ships. Now, you're going to do that. You're going to hit the lock on, you're going to go through all four of your um, ballistic control units and then hit the missiles at the end there. Um, so that you launch against the target the second that the uh, lock-on completes. Yeah, you hit lock-on, you fire, and then you die. You go up, you dock up, and then you come back out for round two. And that's basically it. So it's well worth just pointing out that this is an easy way to lose ships, but it is a fun way to possibly take out someone who is a little bit unexpected otherwise. And at the same token, I'm warping to the wrong person, at the same time, can, it's a nice excuse to actually undock a Korax sniper because let's be honest, the Korax hull just does not get much use at all. This is not a ship that many people are flying. I believe Frosty Jack actually did an entire month of flying nothing but Korax hulls and I'm pretty sure he'll tell you that that was one of the worst months of game time he has ever had. These are not good destroyers for the most part. They need some serious changes and buffs to make them viable but that's another topic for another video. Anyway, folks, thank you for watching this one right the way to the end. Please do let me know your thoughts and opinions in the comment section down below. And for goodness sake, I'm not going to be entertaining any of you going on rants and rages about why suicide ganking or like low sec gate camping is a new despicable way of affecting players and stuff like that. I'm well aware 
that people have different opinions when it comes to things like gate camps. And I've talked about literally the sort of uh, the ethics of gate camping in EVE Online, in other vi in EVE Echo, sorry, in other videos. I'm not going to go back through it here. So just save your typing fingers. Don't bother telling me that I'm despicable and horrific and how dare I I'm supposed to be supporting the community. Just be aware that this is now a thing. If you want to go and do it, go with my blessing. And if you don't want to, if you think this is the worst thing to happen to EVE since the insurance system, well, now you know how to be aware of it. Keep autopiloting manually, and if you see people on a gate, maybe activate an extender or a damage control unit or something, and if you happen to be using things like interceptors for cargo running and you're AFK, be aware that there are now possibilities, or there are possibilities, of being caught, uh, like, in that yes you'll go straight through a bubble but if people are fast enough to lock onto you as you approach and the server ticks are just right they can quite comfortably take you out and still loot you so bear that in mind anyway folks thanks for watching right the way to the end happy sailing and see you in new eden